Not even a week has gone by and I already have to eat my own words. The Invisible Man stars Elizabeth Moss of Handmaid's Tale and Mad Men fame, as well as a green suit that can be keyed out to save on the budget. For all two of you who don't know what this property is, The Invisible Man is an H.G. Wells novel turned classic film from the Universal Monster Movies era of the 1930s in which a scientist creates a potion that turns him, well, invisible. He then runs around doing all kinds of dastardly deeds, like streaking through the park. In this 2020 update, the Invisible Man is used as a metaphor for long-term mental, emotional, and physical damage victims of abusive relationships go through and are left with after said relationship, if you can even call that, ended. Moss plays Cecilia, who runs away from her controlling abuser, Adrian, who kills himself in response. However, something is wrong and little oddities escalate into large-scale problems and Cecilia is desperate to find out whether she is going in sane in the membrane or Adrian is still alive. I'm sorry I have to bring this up, as I'm sure you guys are as sick of this woke crap as Chris Cornell was of living. If you don't know by now, everyone who was given a trophy and never taught how to lose are trying to pigeonhole this film like the Joker. Why, you ask? Apparently, it isn't feminist enough. Yes, the same dipshits who thought tearing down beloved heroes like Sarah Connor think an abuse victim, one who finds her own inner strength to stand up for herself and defeat her own demon despite incredible odds and extraordinary circumstances, is not a symbol of empowerment. I don't understand how this shit continues to spread like a cancer in society, and if you unironically believe in this nonsense, you should have been thrown off a cliff like a Spartan reject. Well, that was a tangent. What relevance does this have with the movie, El Bellio? Well, first off, there wasn't a woke agenda shoved down my throat like a hot dog eating contest. Second, this comes from the mind of Lee Wan L, who wrote the screenplay, story play, produced, and directed the whole project, so it is one unified vision. Third, the metaphor is subtle and never abuses you like an X with an aluminum bat. Lastly, it's a far better and more interesting version of sleeping with the enemy. If there is one glaring flaw, it isn't the movie itself, but the trailer. If you watch any advertisements at all, you are being shown a condensed version of the movie and should avoid them like Dave Navarro at a blood donor. Most other gripes I have are due to unnecessary jump scares. Don't misunderstand, almost all of them are earned, including a confrontation midway through the film. Beyond that, I cannot think of many more flaws, like my slight confusion of the logistics of the ending scene, which was more confusing than Kathleen Kennedy being allowed to work on any project post the sequel trilogy. Also, if Adrian is attuned to Cecilia's thought process, Process, then when a certain object goes missing, why was a certain location not torn apart to find it? I've played both sides of that in my head and still can't settle on a solid answer. Well, it only took nearly a quarter of a year, but Hollywood finally produced a film that isn't literal trash. The acting is good, writing is solid enough, the pillars of logic hold up under inspection, characters make responsible choices based on the situations at hand, the theming and metaphor aren't abused like Rihanna if she was in the UFC, who would have guessed the best movie of the year would be a horror mystery thriller from Blumhouse. The Invisible Man is a legitimately good film. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed, and if you did, please like, share, and subscribe for more weekly reviews, and I'll see you next week.